Hello, this is Terrell Pauley with Healthcare IT Solutions. And in today's video, what I'd like to do is I'd like to give a brief overview of HL7, what it is and what it's about. It's pretty much going to be an overview for for beginners. And so we're going to get in get get right into it. So so HL7 as what the uh, what the slide here says, it's a, the definition for it is it's the standard form of communication for transferring electronic health images, uh, excuse me, electronic health information between various clinical information systems. So pretty much uh, so HL7, if you think about it, it is a so it's a form of communication. So if you look at, for instance, uh, if you look at the language like the um, different languages uh, let's say take, for instance you take the Spanish language and if person A speaks English and only and person B speaks Spanish well person B will try to talk to person A but they'll try to communicate using Spanish but they're not going to be able to communicate because they don't uh, have this the they don't know the same language they're not they don't have the same form of communication which is the language uh, portion now let's say if person a was bilingual and they spoke English and Spanish well then person B will be able to speak Spanish and then person a will say hey yes I can understand because I um, because I actually uh, know that that's a uh, form of communication so I can repeat uh, speak back to you in Spanish so you can kind of think of uh, HL7 like a form of communication that way. That's an easy way to kind of explain uh, such things, you know, to these different standards, uh, th these different standards uh, such as HL7. So think of HL7 as that, you know, standard form of communication and it's uh, and, and it's used for transferring the electronic health information. So in the example slide that I actually have here, let me get rid of that in the example slide. So what you so what, what we have here. So let's just say that we have a hospital and within the hospital, you have a HIS, which is uh, which stands for a hospital information system. You have a PAX, which stands for a picture archiving communication system. And then you have a RIS, which stands for a radiology information system. So these are different types of clinical information systems that you'll typically find in in hospitals uh and imaging centers and uh and uh uh healthcare environments such as that now if you want more of a uh a detailed description of information about exactly what a pax is and or as well I have some more videos that you can actually find tutorials that are that are fi that you'll find on my channel which is healthcare IT solutions and you can find out more information there. But for the purposes of this example here, we're gonna go here. So we're in the hospital, we have these different uh, clinical information systems. So let's say for instance, a patient comes into the hospital and their first time coming into the hospital. So the one of the first things that they may do is they may actually, they need to get registered with uh, as a registered patient within the hospital. So the hospital staff will actually enter the patient's information within the his which was which is the hospital information system so they can you know they'll get regular pertinent information name date of birth social security address and all of that good stuff that is needed to uh to actually serve and support that patient so in step one what will typically happen is or what could happen depending on the workflow is once that patient gets registered, then where HL7 comes into play is, well, let's say if uh, the PAX also wants to have this information. Uh, so so what uh, so what the HIS will do is actually when once that patient it gets registered, then the HIS will transmit that will send that will communicate that uh, that that message that it uh, that patient registration message to PAX, letting PAX make PAX. Um, making PACs aware that that uh, this patient has been registered and that patient registration is typically called an ADT message um, and that's in uh, and that's what um, 
and that ADT message will be sent to PACS. And and typically, but I I forgot to mention that what we're going to talk about actually. Let me back up just one second. Is that we're going to talk about three uh, common common types of HL seven messages, which are I just explained one kind of explaining one, which is a. Uh, admission discharge transfer message which is uh, ADT for short which transmits patient administration messages we have an order message or or ORM for short, for short and we also have a results message which is ORU uh, for short so let's get back to our example here so uh, the HIS will send that that uh, ADT message for that new patient registration to PAX so PAX is aware that there's a uh, there's a new patient and PAX will also uh, uh, create a new record for that patient and PAX in, in the PAX database at the same time or a little bit before a little bit after the HIS will also the, the, the radiology information system also wants to be made aware of uh, if it's a, if it's a um, if it's going to be a radiology exam uh, then the then the risk system will also want to be made aware of um, of that patient. So the HIS will also send that same ADT message to risk system. So now the risk and the PACs are both aware of this new patient. And that's in step one. Okay, so now in step two of the workflow, let's say that so next the patient has been registered and now we want to actually create an order for the patient, for the for the patient, because they come in and they need uh, something happens to them where they injure their knee, and they want to get an exam. They need to, to see a doctor, emergency doctor, to have an examination. You know, you know they're kind of bleeding out, maybe in their knee or something like that, and they want to get checked out ASAP. So if they've been registered. Was the, being being registered is the first step. And then next will be number two is that they want to actually uh, the hospital will want to create an order that uh, for this examination. So the order will be created, can be created in the HIS system, uh, hospital information system. And now we want to also uh, send that order to PAX. So PAX is aware of the new, the, new, the new order and the same thing with the risk. We'll send that to, to the risk system as well. So both PAX and, and risk are aware of the new patient and they're aware of the order that this patient has been registered for. Now, after the, if you go back and you're thinking about the workflow, um, the patient has been registered, they have an order, and then maybe an hour or two later, they actually go and they have, uh, they go through and they have a CT exam or MR, MRI exam back in the, in the, uh, in the, in, in the area of the hospital. And then once, um, once the, they have their exam, the images will be read by a radiologist, a doctor, a physician that's on staff and they'll read, they'll read, they will interpret the images and they will create a report, which will then, so this, in this information in this example here is done in the risk where the radiologist will actually because it's a radiology exam so the radiologist will actually uh, interpret and dictate a report and a report will get will get created it gets created in the risk okay and so then then the risk uh, so once so the his the his will want to be made aware of this report so the risk will actually send that um, send that report which is uh, in text format we'll send that report back to the HIS via HL7 so and that's the ORU report so in this example I just uh, you know try to just briefly show uh, an example of a workflow that can be used utilizing the communication method of HL7 now I will uh, say that uh, in 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 disclosure that so for me so actually um, I am uh, my area of expertise is in diacom and packs uh, risks uh, and things of that nature but 
H07 is not particularly my expertise. There are other colleagues that are actually more geared. They, they're actually, uh, they're actually, they specialize in being HL7 integration specialists, but just being involved in this space for uh, a number of years that um, I you know, know some basics and information about HL7. So I just wanted to pr provide a brief overview of what that is and hopefully that this has been helpful for somebody who wanted just to understand and kind of know what the basics are of HL7, what it can be used for and uh, and everything like that. So if this video was uh, helpful for you, then, you know, give it a thumbs up. If you want to have, have any questions, you can actually leave them, leave them in the comments. And uh, and also as well, d depending on what type of uh, healthcare IT job that you have, you can some 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 uh, healthcare IT professionals, they may actually mix they may do everything. They may do uh, PACS administration, risk administration, and as well as HL7 integration. It just depends on uh, what type of job that you have. If you're working for a small imaging center or a large hospital, your roles and responsibilities can differ greatly. So it, that just depends on where you're at. So if you, but if you actually want to know the, uh, 10 surefire strategies on how to get started within PAX administration. I'll actually leave the link in the, uh, in the, um, in the description of this video below and you can check, uh, check that out. Uh, those are the steps that I actually used, utilized myself on how to actually, how I got started in PAX administration over 13 years ago. So again, like this video, if you found it helpful, uh, subscribe, if you want to, uh, get notified and subscribe and, and uh, notify get notified if you want to hear more videos and tutorials like this and again my name is Terrell Pauly with healthcare IT solutions until next time take care